All right, as you return to your seats, just stand and grab your copy of God's Word. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, I do want to say a, a huge, huge thank you to the church for Wednesday night. Uh, I appreciate your cards, your gifts, and so forth. Uh, you will, you can, I can never express enough thanksgiving uh, to you for all that you do for us. Uh, you are a blessing, and you being here this morning uh, simply uh, shows your love, your faithfulness, and labors as we minister to the community around us, uh, shows your love and support, uh, and I appreciate that, church. I want you to know that your faithfulness, your committedness uh, to liberty, uh, and to, to me as pastor, is so, so obvious. It's not unnoticed, but it is noticed. And you uh, are a picture of God's grace because I do not deserve the kindness uh, that you show me. And I thank you so, so much for being a picture uh, of God's amazing grace. So thank you, a huge, huge thank you from the depths of my heart. If you will, turn in your Bibles to Matthew 24. I'm going to pick up, kind of and hit on a part two. From last Sunday, I wasn't finished uh, with uh, kind of what all the Lord had put in our heart. Uh, I want to be sure we have clear focus on uh, what's going on in the world today. And of course, Israel is uh, in the spotlight. Now remember, Israel is God's prophetic clock. Uh, you want to know where we're at in things? You watch Israel. But I want us to be sure that our focus is in the right place today. Now, I want to say, I want to ask you to pray for me because, man, I, I'm telling you, I have felt demonic activity uh, as I have prepared to stand here this morning. I mean, right up till now. I found that when preaching on demons and the, 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 uh, the activity of demons uh, as found in God's Word, uh, that, uh, that there is warfare, but it seems as if hell doesn't mind us just uh, doing, uh, I guess, general conversation about uh, the enemy uh, and uh, demons and their activities. But when we get specific uh, about what demons are doing, then hell really cranks up uh, the heat. Uh, and so this is really what we're talking about is demonic activity in the day in which we live. In many ways, I'll show you that uh, here in just a few minutes. It's so encouraging to walk back here and, and uh, to go check the air behind and uh, to see, see two of our brothers and sisters on their knees back there praying. And it reminded me that they we're hedged in with prayer. So you pray for me uh, as, we, uh, as I stand and we try to do what the Lord would have us to do. But Matthew 24, I just want to look at a couple of verses beginning in verse 42. Verse 42. Amen. I want to encourage you again. Again, like I said, I know that on the screen behind me uh, that we have Scripture, and I understand that we, we, uh, we're modern. We use our cell phones and all of that. I do that in our men's meetings. Uh, in other places, I'll go where I need a copy of God's Word. I'll use my cell phone. Uh, but I just want to encourage you. Carry your Bibles to church. Let's, let's return to that. Uh, where you get your copy of God's Word, the sword in your hand. I mean, when you go to war, are you going to carry a picture of the, of the sword or are you going to carry a sword? You, if uh, you meet three guys in the alleyway and they got switchblades, are you going to want a picture of a gun or are you going to want a weapon in your hand? So try showing them the picture and let's see how far that goes. Anyway, I know it's the word. I'm, I'm just a little out there on that one, but it's okay. Uh, but anyway, so we're, uh, we're looking at Israel part two, but I want you to look at verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, uh, he would have watched and would have not suffered his home to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. You may be seated and may God add uh, the blessings to the reading of his word. Now, let me say immediately, right off the get-go, that unequivocally, we as a church uh, and we as believers, that we stand with Israel without compromise. We, amen. That's worth clapping your hands about. Amen. We also, just as in war-torn Germany in World War II, just as there were good Germans uh, who were against Hitler uh, and against the Holocaust... Uh, and against uh, 
uh, that Nazi regime. There were good Germans who stood against that. There are also good Palestinians who are against Hamas and they are against the violence uh, and they are against jihad and terrorism. And so we stand with those Palestinians as well because both sides need Jesus just like we need Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet on me on that. The Bible says that he is willing that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and so we are to love the world. Uh, and that's a whole, we don't want to get into all of that. That's not where we're going. But I just want you to understand that, that our focus is on souls and winning souls and pointing people to Jesus, no matter their people group or where they're from. Amen? Amen. Okay. So I want to say something now prophetically. I, I wish I could spend great time today talking about the geopolitical scene in the Middle East, but uh, that's certainly not my call to duty. We could do that in a maybe a, a life group class or after church or whatever. Uh, but here today, I want to be clear about a couple of things prophetically speaking. Uh, and so remember what I told you last week, we want to take our Bible uh, and we want to view the world around us through the lens of God's Word. We want to take the Bible and view our lives through the lens of God's Word. We want to take, uh, we want to take the world and our nation, we want to take uh, Washington politics, and we want to view it through the lens of God's Word. And so with the news headlines today, that's what we need to be doing. And so there's a lot of prophecy, I think, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's potentially coming to pass as we watch the headlines. But I want to be very clear about something. I want to be very clear uh, that what we are waiting on now, we are waiting on the rapture of the church. Okay, and I want to be clear on this, this part of that is that absolutely nothing else has to happen, prophetically speaking, before Jesus comes to rapture His church out of this sinful and dying world. Absolutely nothing has to happen. Uh, the only thing I've always said that I believe uh, that has to happen uh, is, is that one more soul will be saved to complete the body of Christ. Now, He can't come for the body, the church, if the body's not complete. Uh, and so I think somewhere, sometime, uh, there's going to be one last soul that will be saved. It may be at Liberty on a Sunday morning. It may be in Africa. It may be in the Ukraine where there's great missionary effort. Uh, it could be in Thailand. I don't know. But somewhere, sometime, there'll be one last soul that will give their life to Jesus. And after they do, sometime after that, Jesus will come for His church because the body is complete. So we are not looking for any signs. I want to be very clear about this. Jesus says in Matthew 24, nobody knows the day or the time. Nobody knows the day or the hour. In fact, he says, it'll come at a time when you think not. Uh, and so I want to be very clear. There's nothing else has to happen. We are simply uh, waiting and living and working and serving and worshiping on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for the rapture of the church. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. So nothing else has to happen prophetically speaking. There doesn't have to be a certain moon in the sky, the 14th blood moon of the year, whatever. There doesn't have to be any more wars or earthquakes or rumors of wars. There doesn't have to be any of that. There doesn't have to be a year, a certain number year. And, and we study numerology, and numerology says that's the year of a great cataclysmic... We don't have to have any of that. We are simply to be watching and waiting for the coming of Jesus to rescue us, to pluck us out of this sinful world, and to take us to heaven to be with Him. Amen. And so the point of all prophecy we studied last week, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if there's prophecy behind a microphone or behind an article online, but it doesn't point to Jesus, then it's not prophecy at all. Because what that verse in Revelation teaches us, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so what we learn from any kind of prophetic teaching and what we learn from world events today by looking at it through God's, the lens of God's Word, what we learn is, is that you and I, that we had better be ready. So this passage of Scripture right here says that. It says that if you would have been watching through the night at your house and you would have been expecting a thief, and you knew that thief was coming, if somebody told you uh, that a thief was coming at 1 a.m., 
uh, then you would be up watching and waiting, and you would have the picture of your Glock on your cell phone so you could run and show it to them. And that thief would not have broke into your house and stole, stole whatever he stole if you knew he was coming at 1 a.m. In other words, you'd be ready. But the problem is we don't know when he comes, and so therefore, and we're not ready. And so he comes and breaks in and steals whatever he wants to steal because we really didn't even think he was coming, and we were doing other things. We were busy with other issues rather than being ready. And so the, the point of prophecy, and even today what I'm going to speak about is this, is that we're not waiting for anything to happen. All we're looking for now is the rapture of the church. And the emphasis on that is, is we better be ready. And what that means is, and listen folks, I don't have to stand and preach a salvation message today, though I will give a salvation appeal at the end of this message. Because you have heard me stand in this pulpit and preach Jesus, 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 and nothing but Jesus. There's one way, the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You won't go to heaven by baptism. You won't get there by church membership. You will not get there by good deeds. You will only get to heaven by going through the blood of Jesus and surrendering your life to the Lordship of Christ. So I preach that over and over and over. And so the fact of the matter is the way we get ready is we give our life to Jesus. And young people, listen to me. Don't delay. Because the longer you wait to give your heart and your life to Jesus, the less likelihood there is that you will ever be saved. Do you understand? Statistically speaking, after the age of 18, and I know God's not bound by statistics, thank God. But statistically speaking, most people are saved before the age of 18. You have a slim chance of ever being saved after the age of 18. I fall in that category. It's God's grace that I got saved at, at 25 years old. So, so listen, you need to be ready. Uh, You've got to give your life to Jesus. And then, church, this is where we need to wake up and we need to be serving. We need to be part of the church of Jesus because God has got a great work going on in the world around us. I'm excited to see the missionary effort that is now going to take place both in Ukraine but particularly in Israel as a result of what's happening there in our modern times. I'm excited about the missionary effort that's going to take place. I pray and I hope that we can be a part of that. We prayed that last week. Uh, So we've got to be ready. But now let's look at some things because I want to bring you back, especially our younger generation. Now remember, our younger generation, twenty percent, our TikTok users in our younger generation. Let me say it like that. Remember last Sunday. So all of our younger generation watches TikTok. That twenty and under, twenty percent get their news information from TikTok. Okay, so I want to say that I want to. I want us to be. I want us to see the world through biblical lenses, and I want us to be biblically educated and biblically literate on the world around us. So when we hear garbage on TV or from people we work with, we can call it garbage, and we can say, "Let me take you to the Bible and show you what the Bible says." And so, young people, here's the thing about this generation of young people today, and you adults need to be aware of this. They are extremely moved in their heart toward, and sympathetic in their heart toward humanitarian causes. So like what's going on in Israel where people's dying, both sides where people have been dying. So they're very moved in their hearts toward humanitarian causes and they, and, and they, and they want to be involved in bringing humanitarian relief, whether it be to homeless people on the streets of Franklin County or uh, people uh, in the Middle East uh, who are suffering poverty uh, and, uh, and suffering in those war torn areas. But however, what happens a lot in the heart of those young people is they're oftentimes moved by a cause and they don't really understand what the cause is they are supporting. And so in America, on our college campuses, all the way from University of Southern California to Harvard, there have been pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protests anti-Israel protest. And I've watched interviews this week on these college campuses where they interviewed these college students and said, why are you demonstrating at an anti-Israel protest? What are your reasons? And the common answer from college campus to college campus from these college kids was, uh... And that was it. So... It's a joyful thing that our, that, that our generation of young people are moved in their heart and sympathetic in their heart toward humanitarian causes. 
It's also a sad thing that oftentimes they jump on a bandwagon, bandwagon and not even know why they're supporting the cause they're supporting, why they're holding banners, why they're holding flags, or in this case, why they're anti-Israel. I also want to say, though, there are many in the world today uh, who give themselves to humanitarian causes because it causes a, a sensation to come over them, and it's a feel-good sensation. It makes them feel good because they've done something for someone else. And, and really all that is, uh, is that's, they're trying to alleviate the guilt they feel in their conscience for having sinned against the holy God and needing Jesus as Lord of their life. And so we do things to make us feel good rather than just repent of our sin and ask Christ to save us and have our sins all washed away so we can lay our head down at night in peace. Are you with me today? Amen. I feel like I'm speaking more than Greek or Hebrew up here this morning. Maybe it's a demonic activity, but stay focused just for a minute, okay? Uh, and so I want us to look through a biblical lens, lens what's happening in the world today. At least, if you will, put that first map up there on the screen. Oh, goodness, that didn't come out like I thought it would when I, when I sent it to you. So, so this is a map of modern Israel. Okay, you're familiar with this, but I, I, you have to know uh, that this is modern Israel for what I'm, I'm about to show you. Uh, now, I will show you that that little bitty teeny strip of land right there is the Gaza Strip. That's the land that is disputed right now. Uh, or not disputed, but that uh, the Palestinians and Hamas uh, are fighting for. Two million Palestinians live in the Gaza Strip. Okay, now I want to... So what we have to do is and now we, we need to go back and see why they're fighting. And this is a biblical thing. It's not only a biblical thing, but it's a spiritual warfare thing. And it's not just a spiritual warfare thing, but it is a demonic thing. It's been belched right out of the belly of hell. Watch this. Uh, show us the next. So if you'll go back to Genesis 15, you go back to Genesis 15, you're going to see that God, well, God called Abraham in Genesis 12. And he said, Abraham, I want you to get out of your land. I want you to leave everything you know. I want you to leave all of your family. And I just want you to bring you and your immediate family, leave the land you're in and go to the land that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to give you a, a land, uh, and, uh, and this is the land that God gave Abraham. Okay, now, Israel has never really fully occupied all of that land. Uh, but you see the, the highlighted part. You see Israel up there, the little tiny uh, uh, nation state, as it is today. But this highlighted area is all of the land that Israel has been given by God. According to the Bible. See, Israel is supposed to occupy much of Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. That's the land that God give a title deed to when he give that land to Israel. Are you with me so far? So that's what they're supposed to occupy, but they don't occupy that and they never really have. And today, they're just that little uh, nation state that we showed you in that very first slide. So I want to tell you how this happened, and watch what, watch what happens now. So God gives Abraham this land. Here is the issue today. Okay, follow it. Three things. Three things are the issue. The land, the lineage, and the Lord. That's the three things that are at issue. So God tells Abraham, I'm going to give you a land. Okay, that's all the land there in the highlighted region that God gave to Abraham. And then God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your seed. And from your seed shall all the world be blessed. And what God was talking about there was Jesus, ultimately. Lord. So he's going to come from, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's why he's called the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Uh, and then on down through the lineage till Jesus was born. And so what the Lord was telling Abraham, Abraham, I'm giving you a land, and not only am I giving you a land, but I'm going to bless you. And he says, Abraham, and from Abraham is where the, the Jewish nation come from. He said, and Abraham, I'm going to bless all of those that bless you, and I'm going to curse all of those that curse you. Write that down. Remember that. You need to remember that. And then from your seed... All the world shall be blessed. In other words, there's coming one. His name's going to be Jesus. And we see in Genesis 22, fast forward a little bit. 
We see in Genesis 22 where God tells Abraham, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, that son of promise. I want you to go up on the top of Mount Moriah and offer your son there for a sacrifice. Isaac, as a young man, puts wood upon his back. He journeys up to that mountaintop. We know the story. God provides a sacrifice there because Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Uh, And so God provided there. Well, some 2,000 years later, there was another son who put wood upon his back and he journeyed up in that same mountain range and he went to a hilltop with wood on his back, but that son sacrificed himself. And that was Jesus. He sacrificed himself for the sins of the world, for my sins and your sins. You still with me this morning? Okay. So now let's, so let, now let's back up. And so God makes Abraham a promise in his old age. So Abraham says, now God, we got a problem here. You've promised to bless me. You've given me a land. You've promised to bless me and you've promised to bless my seed. But God, there's this huge issue. I am an old, old man. And my wife, she's an old, old lady. And not only are we well past childbearing years, but we probably ain't got too many years left to live. And so how are you going to bless my seed? And God says this. God said, I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to bless you, and I'm giving you a promise right now. I'm going to give you a son. And from that son will come that seed that will one day be the Messiah of the world. And so Abraham had a promise. So there it is right there. Jealousy over that promise has what caused, has what has caused turmoil since Genesis chapter 15. Jealousy over a promise. Okay, stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. So God says, Abraham, I'll give you a son. His name's going to be Isaac. And so they're waiting, and they're waiting, and the years pass, and the years pass, and now not only are they near child, not only are they past childbearing years, but now they're very close to the grave, like one foot in the grave, another foot on the slippery banana peel. And Abraham's like, what are we going to do? You made us a promise, but you're not coming through on your promise. And so his wife comes up with this plan. Abraham's wife, Sarah, comes up with this plan. She says, hey, I know what we're going to do. I'm going to give you another wife. Her name's Hagar. I'll give you her, okay? And you and her can conceive a child, and we'll have our child that, we, that was promised to us. And, and the only thing is, that's not the child of promise. That's a child of the flesh. And so because Abraham did not believe that God could fulfill his promise. Abraham and Sarah got in the flesh. And when they got in the flesh, Abraham got with Hagar. They had a child. That child's name was Ishmael. Okay, so there's God and his promise. The Spirit was going to give God, was going to give Abraham and Sarah a child named Isaac. On this side of the tree, Abraham got in the flesh, and Sarah got in the flesh. They couldn't wait on God, and they had a child. His name was Ishmael. So you have Abra- you have Isaac on this side, the child of promise that God give, uh, and then on this side you have the child of the flesh, which was Ishmael. Okay, are you with me so far? Amen. I want you to notice that all through the centuries, demons always work the same. Okay, demons work the same, and they've worked the same from the beginning of time. So what God creates or gives, the devil counterfeits and tries to take away or destroy. Okay, so one of these is God's creation, God's promise. Isaac, the son of promise. The other, the devil counterfeited, and it's a lie, and it's a moment of flesh that caused it. That's Ishmael. Now this is important, so stay with me. Uh, and, and by the way, to pr- demons... And demonic activity, it's the same through the ages. Just like human personality has been the same through the ages. We can see in God's Word, demons are the same through the ages. Did you see the pictures on the news of babies that had been shot and beheaded? They blurred them out, but babies that had been shot and beheaded uh, there as terrorists attacked Israel. Uh, And now they're saying some 80% uh, of of, uh, those that were slain were tortured before they were slain. The women and the teenage girls were raped, and now they're saying some of the babies were even raped before they were shot and left on the street. Okay? Go back to Exodus. Go back to Exodus. Remember what Pharaoh did? He was afraid that the, that the Jewish slaves, would, the, Israeli, the, the Jewish slaves would take over. 
And so he commanded that all of the male children be killed when they were born. Hmm. So this has happened before, preacher? Yeah. It's happened before. Pharaoh commanded all the Jewish babies to be killed so that the Jews would not multiply and rise up in revolt against Egypt. But it happened again. Later, when Jesus was born, Herod was afraid of someone who else that might be king. And so he commanded that all the children, male children, two and under, be killed and murdered. And that great slaughter took place. Do you see a pattern here? Uh, and, and then we see it on the news, the same thing taking place. So, now stay with me. So here's where we go with this. Watch. So, some 2,000 years ago before... Uh, well, let, let me back up. Let me just say this. God give Israel this land. And I want you to understand something. Some of these protesters, they're saying that Israel is, uh, or that re- Israel is occupiers that Israel is living in a land that does not belong to them. Well, friend, history does not even bear witness to that. We can look at biblical history and see that Israel was in the land some 2,100 years before anyone was ever called a Palestinian. 2,100 years. God gave that land to Israel. Uh, At 2,600 years they'd been in the land before Islam was ever established. And so Israel is not occupiers. They are not unrightfully occupying the land. But Israel is joyfully occupying a land that the God of heaven give them to dwell in. That's what the situation is there today. So around 610 A.D., Muhammad comes along. Now watch, I'm about to show you something. Muhammad comes along. He says that he... Uh, received this vision from an angel that an angel met with him and gave him new revelation. Okay, hang on, let me show you something here. The book of Galatians says that if anyone, even an angel, comes to you preaching some other gospel, that they are accursed. In other words, that it's a demon. Okay, are you with me? So Muhammad said an angel comes to him and gives them this new revelation. Uh that God's promise was not given to Abraham and Sarah, but that God's promise was given to Abraham and Hagar. And that Isaac was not that son of promise, but Ishmael was that son of promise. Because back, if we go back to Genesis 15, uh, or Genesis 21, when Ishmael was born, because it was a, he was a child of the flesh, he was Satan's counterfeit, uh, God said... That man's hand will be against every man, and every man's hand will be against him. And from that day, there has been violence uh, from, uh, from uh, the offspring of Ishmael toward God's people. And there's been violence because of jealousy over the land, the lineage that led to Jesus Christ, and the lordship issue. Okay, are you with me? Uh, And so this thing is very demon-possessed. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say this. So if you go to Genesis 6, where the Bible says that uh, God is about to destroy the earth, but he says the whole earth was full of... uh, The whole earth was filled with violence. Filled with violence. And some of you know this. You've seen the news or watched uh, whatever commentators you watch. Hamas. In the Hebrew, means violence. It's found four times in the Old Testament. So Hamas means violence. And, and, and we see it first found there in Genesis 6 where it says, the whole earth was filled with violence. And that word filled, that word filled, what it means is translated later in Scripture, it means possessed. The whole world was possessed with Violence. There was demon-possessed violence that took place when God destroyed the earth in the flood. Okay, and so that's what we see today out of Hamas. Listen, they want only one thing, and that is violence and bloodshed. In their charter in 1985, listen to me. In their charter in 1985, the charter states that in essence, 
that what they want is the total and complete destruction and annihilation of Israel. And they want Israel wiped off the face of the earth. So we see that demon-possessed violence. And so, in fact, from Exodus, we see all this violence against the Hebrew people. Every single bit of it is demon-possessed. Anti-Semitism is demon, is demonic. Do you understand that? It's demonic and it's very coarse. So what we're looking at here, we're not just looking at politics on the news in the Middle East. What we're looking at here, we're looking at spiritual warfare and God's chosen people. Okay, show a map, uh, at least the next one of the world. Okay, the world scene. So, so now you see kind of where, where all this is coming from. So it's over the land. And the Palestinians say it's their land. It's never been their land. In fact, the word Palestinian and Palestine, that never came into being until about 135 A.D., and I don't have time to teach a history class on that. Uh, but Israel has been in the land since God promised them that land. So it's their land. But I want to show you something. So, so here's something we need to be watching for and looking for. So little, I'll give you just a little backstory there where, where this uh, conflict has come from. But I, I want to show you some things. So after the, after the rapture of the church, okay, after we're out of here, that's what we're looking at in Ezekiel 37 and 38. Okay, now watch. We're seeing these nations come against Israel, and I showed you an alignment of those nations last week. So after the church is gone, those years of tribulation, these nations are going to come against Israel. Some of those nations is Iran. We talked about that. That's Persia. She's an end times player. She's going to, she's going to have a, a union with the Soviet Union. You can barely see the, the southern tip of uh, Russia way up north of Turkey there. Uh, but... That union is already there. Remember that, you, that uh, Iran is supplying drones to Russia to use in the war in the Ukraine? That alliance has been there. Russia uh, is partnered uh, uh, with uh, Syria already. So we see these alliances forming. Now stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, so the things you need to look for, you need to look at other countries' involvements in coming days. Because we know in the end times, we know Turkey... Uh, look up there where Turkey's at. Turkey is also, Turkey today, um, they are, uh, are uh, pro-Palestinian, uh, and uh, they, uh, uh, they are definitely uh, claiming a neutral position, but they do not have a neutral position. Uh, Egypt, we know Egypt is pro-Palestinian, and, and to be pro-Palestinian, you have to be anti-Israel. Uh, and so all of these nations are going to come against Israel. And so right now, America and our, our president and our, our government supposedly say we're standing with Israel and now we're sending all these billions of dollars to aid to Israel. But I want to show you something from Ezekiel 37 and 38, Ezekiel 38 particularly. When this time comes, now remember, we're at, those of us that are saved, we're gone. But when all these nations come against Israel, I want to show you that there is no nation standing with Israel. But what about America? We're her ally. We're standing with her right now. We're sending her military aid and billions of dollars in aid. What about America? Because in the end time scenario, Ezekiel 38, nobody stands with Israel but God himself. And God defends her. And God brings the victory. Well, I, I, want, I want to tell you in days ahead while we're still here, before the rapture. In days ahead, I would start watching for these other nations to start speaking out against what Israel's doing. Remember what I said last week? As long as Israelis are dying and Israel's on the defense, the, whole, the, the, the world mostly stands with them. But when Israel goes on the offense and does what God has given the government authority to do, which is protect their nation, God's given them that authority. When they go on the offense... Uh, and then other people are dying, uh, then the world's going to be against them. But why would America leave, why would America leave Israel's side? Well, well, I don't know. Let's hypothetically, let's hypothetically pretend that there's this nation in fairy tale land. 
This nation's left-wing people in government and in power, they thought it would be a good idea to have open borders in that nation in fairy tale land. Because they realize if they let people come in across these open borders and undocumented that they can get their vote and they'll always be voted in and maintain power because the whole election process is corrupt anyway. Uh, and so along with tens of thousands of illegals coming into our, that fairy tale land, many of them are also terrorists. And so in this fairy tale land, if there was a huge terrorist attack on that land of the scale and magnitude that has been in Israel, then that nation would have to stop supporting Israel, stop supporting war in Ukraine, and pull all of its resources home to protect the home front. Are you with me on all that? Yeah. Are you sleeping? Because if you're sleeping, you're thinking you're having a dream right now. Okay. And so, watch this on the world scene. Watch the U.S. in coming days. We may not be here for this. But watch the U.S. in coming days to start pulling back support. Watch these nations start forming an anti-Israel alliance. And, and, and by the way, Hamas, the Palestinians in Gaza Strip elected Hamas to leadership in 2000, 2005, 2008. Okay, so Hamas has been in control of Gaza, some 2 million Palestinians. And what they've done is they've taken over the synagogues, and from the synagogues there where they preach Islam, they've preached, they've preached what the Koran commands, the killing of Jews and infidels, which are Americans are considered infidels. And they've indoctrinated uh, and they've impregnated the, the, the Palestinians in Gaza. They've went into schools. And that is a curriculum now taught in schools in Gaza since 2008. They've taught young school children and stand, instead of standing and uh, reciting a pledge to the American flag like we did for liberty and justice for all, they, not, they teach uh, anti-Israel propaganda to school children. So these, these youth are being born uh, in lies, demonic lies, hating Israel, believing Israel needs to be ex uh, 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 removed from the land and exterminated. And, and, and Hamas has even went as far as to offer these great cash lump rewards if an individual from a family will go and be a suicide bomber inside of Israel and blow up people. And the more people that you blow up, if you blow up a few at an at a, at a, at a, uh, outside coffee shop, then you'll get X amount of money. But if you go on a bus and you kill 30 people at one time, uh, then you're going to get more money. Your family gets that money. That's incentives they give. And so I want you to see the demon possession there. So this is a spiritual conflict. But, but what, watch for these nations to start forming alliances all around Israel. Now, listen, I want to tell you something. These liberal news outlets and these liberals across our various cities, even down at UGA that were marching this past week and our college campuses all across America, listen, they are having these anti-Israel protests claiming that Israel is the bullies. But I want you to understand there's 22 Arab nation states, 52 Muslim nation states, and one Jewish free state. So tell me who the bully is. Are you with me today? Okay. And, and so what Hamas has done, by the way, they, they refuse to let Palestinians leave Gaza. They're using them as human shields. They're placing their tactical military uh, uh, posts within highly populated civilian areas. Yet Israel's going in dropping leaflets saying, leave these towns because we are about to invade those towns. If you're in this town, leave it. We're giving you warning. Flee because we're coming after Hamas. So this whole thing is spiritual, friends. And I think we can take the Bible, God's Word, and we can line things up. Yeah. Abigail, you come. But what I want you to see is this today. Watch. I want you to see we better be ready. Is your name written up there? Have you ever given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? And man, I could preach another sermon today just on convenient Christianity. 
And that's what we have in America today where there's no sacrifice, where there's no service requirement, where, where, there's, where there's no ex- expectations according to God's Word. We just kind of come and go, and, and it makes us feel good because we, come on, we go to church on Sundays. It makes us feel good. It helps alleviate that, that uh, conscience we have about, uh, about, the, about how we've sinned against the Holy God. And I want to ask you, have you ever been born again? If you've ever been born again, tell me where and when that you got born again. Where did you give your life and your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? It doesn't have to be in church. It could have been in your house, your living room, riding down the road, behind the chicken house, in your office, in a closet. I don't know. But where? Well, I'm telling you this. If you take that Bible today and you look at, look at the world through the lens of your Bible, particularly what's going on in Israel and how demonic it is, and by the way, one of the things about demonic, one of the things about spiritual warfare and uh, warfare with demons, according to God's word, it, it's going to increase more and more and more as we get near the coming of our Lord. Amen. And we're seeing that. Literally, we are seeing, seeing demonic violence. And I want to remind you of something that Israel is not responding uh, militarily to a military attack. This was not a military attack. This was a terrorist attack, not upon military installations in Israel, but upon the civilian population in Israel. And so they're doing what I told you last week we would do as Georgians. Had 30,000 people in Athens, including students and elementary school children, were killed last week. We would respond as Georgians, not with simple back up and let's have political talks, but we're going to respond. And it is our duty to support Israel, to stand with Israel according to God's Word, to bless Israel if we can bless them. But then we need to be ready. And I want to ask you something. Are you ready? And if you're ready, is your family ready? Is your family, are your children ready? Why are we not having these talks with our family? Like, son, have you ever been saved? Do you know what it means to be saved? Daughter, have you ever been saved? Well, oh, preacher, they're grown. They're not in my house anymore. I would still have that talk with them. Talk to mom and dad. Talk to grandma and grandpa. Talk to neighbors. Are you ready for eternity? Because eternity awaits. Because Jesus is coming. No man knows the date or the hour, and I'm not trying to date set. I'd be a fool to try to date set. But I will tell you this. One thing I know for sure is, is God's true on His promises, just like He was true to Abraham. He's true when He says that He's coming back. He said, as I leave here, the same man, the angel said, as He left, He will one day return. One day He's coming on clouds of glory, and eternity will begin. So give your life to Jesus. Today is that day.